welcome to the Nitpicks podcast. This is Lee. I'm the Nitpicks books and patterns graphic designer. And as usual, I'm here with my friend Stacy. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm the outreach director at Nitpicks. How's it going, Lee? Pretty good. It's, it's cooling up here. I have the front screen door open in my house. It's all nice and cool. It feels yeah, like I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a pair of socks because it's now chilly that I'm not running around barefoot like I normally do in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a flannel t-shirt and a transition weather clothes. <laughs> transition weather, my favorite. Yeah. So what hilarious. have you been up to when it comes to oh. knitting? Oh my gosh, so much. Well, I took a trip, which I had talked about last time, uh, kind of packing for it. And so now it it has been taken, the trip. <laughs> and so I started two new projects. I ended up not doing a ton of trip knitting, actually, because it just we were like kind of just doing stuff all the time. There wasn't a lot of like sitting and knitting time. But I knit on the plane both ways and in the car. Uh, we kind of we went to um, Des Moines and then we drove to Chicago. And so there's some car knitting. So I have two different projects I started. Um, I started a cardigan with Swish Pops which is a very colorful cardigan. It's the um, Cropped Cardi pattern by Nora Gone, which is from a book of hers that I checked out from the library. Shout out to your local library. It's a great place <laughs> for <your> books. libraries. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it is not designed for super multicolored yarns. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I'm shocked. Very shocked, fun. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll get some uh, process photos up and we'll link those in the show notes so you can see how it's looking. It's a it's a very textured twisted stitch pattern, so it's all pretty busy, but <laughs> I like it. That's I'm, you, I'm doing, <laughs> Starting with the back, and the back isn't really pooling because it's too wide, but I'm hoping the front cardigan panels um, have some fun pooling that happens with the Swish Pops, so there's going to be like the textured pattern and the pool pattern. That's what I'm going for. Um, nice. Yeah, that's that's fun. And then I'm working on some socks, which, as usual, I'm holding fingering weight <laughs> yarn held double for more of a DK worsted kind of weight. I'm knitting the worsted socks pattern, which was recently, not, I guess it wasn't that recently, in, in our <laughs> uh, Woda Classics or Woda Basics. Or, sorry, I have to classics. double check. <laughs> Woda Classics, Simple Knits in Wool of the Andes. Quota is Wool of the Andes worsted book that was kind of a um, redos of a lot of our old classic patterns. Um, and it had a, this real simple worsted socks pattern. And yeah. I'm using that and I'm kind of modifying it a little because fingering held double is a little bit more like a DK kind of. So I, I kind of did the math to figure out the right stitch counts and stuff for my gauge. And I'm holding a a fingering weight yarn for my stash, which is not an Epix yarn, which is a um, it's a self striping yarn, held double with a stroll glimmer. Is that it? It's a yarn that Ooh. doesn't exist anymore. It's a That's, well, we have it in bear. Yeah, we do have it in bear, and I'm I'm using the white, so it's pretty close to bear. So if you want to get that effect, you can still get the bear. Um, yeah, so it has a little bit of sparkliness in it. With the self striping marled. And I, I did like a, a hack kind of thing, which I like figured out through trial and error, which I will share with uh, fellow yarn held double lovers out there. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of just holding the two yarns and letting them kind of twist around each other as, as they do when you hold two yarns together, I'm, um, so I, first of all, I'm a thrower. So it's, I think you can do the same thing if you're a picker in continental versus English. So I hold both yarns in my right hand. I'm wrapping one yarn around my index finger and the other ra- yarn around my uh, ring or middle finger. So I'm holding the two yarns kind of in a a set position as I'm mm-hmm. knitting. So I'm still knitting with the two yarns, but I'm holding them around two different fingers so that they stay placed the same for every stitch basically um and what this does is it makes the marl look more even mm-hmm. makes all the stitches look kind of oh, the same. Yeah. it doesn't i what what i was going for was actually like trying to hold it so that the colored yarn was like on in front all the time mm-hmm. and what it does is Dominant. more like it, it makes it so you can kind of see both colors in every stitch as opposed to when they're like when the yarns are twisting around each other a lot there's like some stitches are the one color and some stitches mm-hmm. are the other color. 
And I like how it's looking. The the even marl it looks really nice. So um, I would recommend. And and how you do it exactly, which yarn is in which finger, is going to depend on how you knit and how it's looking. So I definitely recommend if you're doing a marl project to just play around with that idea of like holding the two yarns on two different fingers, because um, you can kind of like affect how it's looking in the fabric. It's pretty cool. I remember when you. Uh when you brought that in and were showing me it um, at the office, you were saying that your hand was beginning to hurt <laughs> from yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I kind of spent a weekend, uh, two weekends ago, I got really into like all the trial and error and trying it held in different ways. And I was like doing a lot of knitting with the yarn held on different fingers. And um, Monday, my hand started hurting a little bit. And then it kind of hurt like Tuesday, Wednesday. And then on Thursday, it stopped. So I was like, okay, good. I didn't do any permanent damage. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I don't but, think it was, uh, <laughs> you were injuring yourself, not to scare anyone away from well, this I was, technique. I was a little bit but it was just for a second there. Yeah. Oh, but I it was probably guess, just getting um, used to it. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it was it was a weirder way of knitting. And I, mm-hmm. those of us who are knitters and also graphic designers have this fear is like an existential dread kind of fear of like what if something happened to my hand like, what would I do if something happened to my hand so every time I have like a weird hand pain I'm always like don't do anything all day and uh, let it heal and, oh, I get all scared but uh it was fine <laughs> but do yeah. definitely if you're knit this goes for and if you're you know learning a different way of knitting and your hands are your muscles are doing a thing that they don't usually do. Be careful. Do stretches. Don't don't push yourself too hard. Stay safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is good advice for everybody when it comes yes. to knitting. Because yes. I know that sometimes sure. my hands will hurt. That's actually why. Um, just as a side note, it's why I have a problem with um, metal needles because I think just the way I push on them. Um, even if it's just, it's not hard enough to like break a wood needle or whatever, but it's enough where it, it makes my hands kind of cramp. That's why I still, mm. I just use wood needles. Um, when I've tried using metal needles, I just, I don't like the feel. So that's just me. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, you find your favorites and then you continue on. So For sure. I have no knitting to share really because everything I've been knitting in the past few weeks has been... Uh, stuff I can't talk about yet because it's for a new yarn or a new pattern that won't be released for a while because all of my jobs, I think all of my job is like looking into the future. (laughs) So I'm never (laughs) in the now. So, but just to let you know, we've got some great stuff coming up and you'll get to see it. (laughs) And I'm sure I will definitely talk about um, especially the two main projects. One's a pair of socks and one is a hat. Um, I'm sure I will definitely be talking about them on the on the uh, podcast. And in fact, knowing these, I will definitely be talking about both of these projects because I love them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, well, I'm glad so. you're loving them, even though we can't hear about them yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want. I re- and the thing is, is like, um, I just, I don't know. It's. I'm getting back into doing more knitting, but I kind of was stopping for a while, and um, I really wanted to finish my Ventasica and. You'll see this coming up in a photo shoot. We actually took my Ventasica for um, it, for a prop in a big photo shoot. And you'll see these photos soon. But if you see a Ventasica laying on like a blocking mat or whatever, that's mine. And after doing that, I'm like, I really want to finish the sweater. Because <laughs> I've been working on it for so long. And I really love it. But I just keep getting these other projects that I'm like, I know I need to finish this one right now. And then, yeah, so I love it still. Nothing yeah. on the pattern, just other things keep coming up. So <laughs> it, it happens. I, yeah. I have so many things on the needles <laughs> set aside. <laughs> yeah, because I also took a, a quick break. While, in fact, while, <laughs> it wasn't planned, but we had vacation the same week, which everyone at work was delighted by <laughs> the fact that both of us were out of the office at the same time. And um, I did do a little bit of knitting on then, but I was doing some sewing. And actually, I was inspired by uh, one of your sewing projects of a hat. And oh, a big sun hat. And I was very excited. And I used it while I was doing some yard work just to keep the sun off my face. So yeah, it was very so fun. So that was one of my projects that week. I had a lot of stuff going on. But fun. Uh, yeah. Anyway. But I 
think right now we something to keep me even more distracted from my ventasica is <laughs> um, we are announcing a new knit along. Yay, Yay. for knit alongs! Um, I'm partaking in this one. Lee is not, so we're gonna grab Andy, who is the mastermind behind all of our knit alongs. <laughs> and uh, she's going to join us to chat about the knit along. Hi, Andy. Hello. She's always here listening, but yes. she actually gets to talk there. Lurking so. in the background normally. <laughs> so for this knit along, we have decided to go with a garment. And we kind of went with like an easier project. I think that's why we decided on it. Um, so it's good for beginners. Good for your first sweater. Yeah. Uh, Should we reveal the pattern? Um, yes. We look through a bunch of different patterns, kind of hoping to get like a beginner first cable sweater pattern mm -hmm. because Stacy's working on a really great new cable collection for January. <laughs> no, it's it, we always do a cable collection, but it's a really nice cable collection. It's a very nice cable collection. So we wanted to do a uh, beginner friendly first cable sweater pattern for our knit along to sort of get people ready for more complex cables. And Axiom was the perfect choice. Um, it's just a simple drop shoulder cabled sweater with a cable panel only down the front. So you get a lot of plain stockinette to like, <laughs> practice with and get your confidence up and then the front uses um very simple cables but are arranged to look more complex so like it looks very fancy but it is extremely approachable yeah so um just to repeat um because i didn't i don't think we actually said it out loud um the axiom sweater it's by claire slade it is a pattern that is a couple years old. It was in a collection that came out, I believe, in 2021. And it is a unisex sweater, um, gender neutral. So it is good for everyone, a wide range of sizes. So this is going to be a great sweater for anyone wanting to tackle their first sweater or first cable sweater. So I'm very excited. I have really wanted to make this sweater for a while. And when Andy and I were kind of sitting around talking about different patterns we wanted to do, it was like, this is a perfect one. This is great for everybody. So, Yeah, we kept looking at other options and being like, <laughs> and then there's Axiom. And we just kept coming back to it. And then finally we're like, that should just be it. That's the sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope you will join us. We are officially starting on October 1st. And I have to, I'm, I, I'm going to call him out, but we're actually not letting anyone in the office start until October 1st. But mainly it's just so Regan doesn't start till October 1st because he will finish <laughs> it in like two weeks. So, yes, we often take a little head start so that we can get the content ready. But I'm cracking down a little bit because sometimes someone finishes the knit along before the knit along starts. <laughs> <laughs> and that person is Regan. Yes. So, uh, so, um, and, we wanted to do a little bit of extended one. Um, this one goes until uh, mid December. So, um, I mean, obviously, it's a it's a it's a chill knit along. There's nothing. No, no if you don't finish, there's no. We will not make fun of you <laughs> uh, because I will. I have a feeling that most of us, in the, like a lot of us in, on the staff, may not finish. And you've probably seen our our previous knit alongs where not everyone finishes, but it's a fun project to do together. So we're going through December fifteenth. We thought that would be a good time. You can kind of aim for that. If you like having a deadline date, that's a great one to have because then you can wear your beautiful new sweater out when you're visiting for the holidays. You know, going to parties. Or just to stay warm, because if you knit it in a nice wool, it's going to be a nice wooly warm sweater for the holidays. So, Or if you're a very generous knitter, you can make it as a Christmas present for someone. Yes, if you're <laughs> very generous. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm excited. Um, it is originally knit in Wool of the Andes, um, and, but it is a great palette for making it your own and because i want to continue with cool tweed fall we're gonna make it happen cool tweed fall <laughs> <laughs> i'm personally knitting mine in high desert tweed and i'm using the boot leather uh color and i've just we got that in the office and i became so obsessed with that color i cannot explain it brown it's like a deep brownish black but it's really warm and 
I just kept staring at it. I had like a skein on my desk that I would just stare at. And I'm like, this is going to be the one. This is going to be my favorite sweater. This is going to be it. So I chose that. And um, I know you are using Will the End, or you using High Desert Tweed as well, right? I'm also using High Desert Tweed. Um, I am using the Red Tail Tweed colorway. Uh, if you know me at all outside this <laughs> podcast, you know I am obsessed with orange. I and love I that color too. A million orange sweaters. And this is like a nice, like baked, heavily spiced pumpkin pie color. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and what actually one of the projects that I can't talk about quite yet, I actually use that color for uh, the hat, and I really love that color. It's so beautiful. I'll, I mean, to be honest, and I'm not just saying this because I work for nitpicks, but the High Desert Colors palette is just incredibly gorgeous. All of the colors are so beautiful. So Yeah, and the new tweed colors really round it out. If you have yeah. not checked out the new tweeds, they're not just the original colors with tweed on them. They're this whole whole smorgasbord of gorgeous colors. Yeah, I really love it. And then a bunch of us, um, and then, uh, of course, not everyone's using High Desert Tweed. Um, not uh, There are people using the original Wool of the Andes. Um, we've got people using Swish. Um, we have people using regular High Desert. Well, the um, Andes and, Tweed as well to get the tweed that we're oh, all yeah. craving. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> And actually, we do have a new um, sample of it knit up in the High Desert Tweed Yam Hill that you'll be able to see um, to see how it looks in a tweed yarn. And it's gorgeous. We just received the sample not too long ago, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. So, very excited. And one thing that a lot of us have planned are modifications to this pattern because it is such a simple shape and the cables are just on the front. It's really easy to make it your own. Um, I know a bunch of us are planning on converting it to being knit in the round seamlessly instead of knit <laughs> flat <me>. seamed. <laughs> <laughs> and closer to the start date of the knit along, we'll have a blog post up explaining how to do it because this pattern is very easy to make your own and convert like that. Um, if you've never done that before, this is a good one to try it on because it's going to be hard to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the ones who's doing, I, I'm okay with seaming. Um, but I just didn't want to really knit the entire body in pieces. I'd rather just knit it all in the round, um, just to make it go faster for myself. Um, I'm still probably going to knit the sleeves flat or at least part of them flat. Um, but that's kind of where my thinking is on, uh, on knitting this just cause I don't know, seeming, I, I try to make it look really nice and I can, if I try really, really, really hard, but I'm sometimes I'm lazy when it comes to that. So I'm planning on converting mine to seamless because I want to change the shape of the body. And it's just, it's easier to do it if it's seamless because then the front and the back are going to match. And if I yeah. figure out it's not working, it's easier to see when it's already all in one piece. I'm Makes going sense. to make mine like my usual 50s sweater girl style. <laughs> Once again, if you're familiar with any of my stuff outside of the podcast, you probably know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to like make a wide ribbing at the waist and then add waist shaping in. And I think it'll just be a lot easier to figure that out when I am working in the round. But because Makes it sense. is just like a nice, easy panel of cables down the front and mostly stockinette, you can play with it like that. Yeah, I mean, on that note, I'm knitting, um, my plan is actually to start with the sleeves, um, just, and that, and I knit them um, two at a time, just, I think we talked about that on our last sweater knit along, is like knitting them two at a time, that way um, they are, they match. (laughs) If I forget a decrease in one row and do it in the next, it'll be the same on the other side, and it won't look weird. And they'll be the same length, which is also a problem I have sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm very excited. So. I'm so excited. And yeah. to spoil some surprises, some of our other coworkers also have interesting modifications. Like um, one of our coworkers is planning on turning it into a cardigan because the cable panels are just mirrored. It's very oh, easy cool. to like split it, the front panel, and only knit half of it at a time. And suddenly you have a cardigan. Oh, I didn't even know about that modification. Wow, cool. that's going to be fun. I can't yeah. wait to see that. And uh, because it's knit flat, you can do fun things with colors. And another coworker is thinking about doing 
a two-tone situation with the panel of cables in a different color just by working in Tarja. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I had no cool. <laughs> I knew about the two <laughs> colors, but I didn't know that was what uh, this <laughs> this employee's plan was to do. Yes. So wow. I don't want to like name names in case they decide that they don't actually want to do it. And people are like, where where's the promised sweater? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we're still in the early phase. No one's no one has their yarn in front of them yet, but um except for Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine. <laughs> Stacy's been I, good in using stash yarn. The rest of us are like, I would like new yarn, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just made sure I got the, enough of that yarn. I was going to, I knew I wanted to knit a sweater with it. And then when we announced the, uh, the knit along, I'm like, well, that's the sweater I'm going to knit in it. So I'm just excited. Yeah. I really love that color. It might not be. It's, <laughs> I can't wait to show it to more because I think it's hard to see like on the website of what a gorgeous color that is. So yeah, it's definitely hopefully my sweater will show. <laughs> one of those complex shades that like it's hard to photograph how complex it is because the lighting <laughs> you're under just changes the way it looks. It's a gorgeous mm-hmm. yarn. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, we hope you will join us. Um, Again, we are beginning October 1st, and we will have links to the pattern and to all the information that will be coming soon. (laughs) Yeah, we'll link to things in the show notes. So look on your podcast app or the blog post. The blog post always has all the links to everything we talk about in the podcast. Yeah, if you ever... If you're ever looking for something that we um, talk about in the podcast, just check the notes on the blog because uh, we we do go through and link every single thing that we talk about. We Lee does to. that. So if, if something is missing a link, it's because it like didn't exist, and I <laughs> tried to find it. like we try to link to every single thing we talk about. And you yeah. can find the blog at blog.nitpicks.com. That's also where we'll have more details about the knit along and all of the supporting content, like the blog post on converting it to seamless. Yay. Thanks, Andy. Now coming up, we are going to be chatting with one of my favorite humans. Um, His name is Zeb Walter. He is from Disco Fibers, and that is a yarn thrift store. Two of my favorite things in the world, yarn and thrift stores. <laughs> yeah, not not to be confused with actual recycled yarn, which is a different thing, which uh, there's a store here in Portland that sells recycled yarn, which is awesome. But that that is not what this is. This is a yarn thrift store, which takes yarn that was sitting in people's stashes not doing anything and gets it out to people who do something with it. Pretty awesome. So oh, you'll, you'll hear more. In the yeah, I was like, yeah, Zeb <laughs> is, a, I hope you listen. Zeb is a wonderful person to listen to and talk to. So it was a very fun interview. So check it out. Hi, and welcome back. This is Stacy, and we are talking now with Zeb Walter from Disco Fiber here in Portland, Oregon. Hi, Zeb. Hi, everyone. Why don't you explain to our listeners what Disco Fibers is and how you got started with it? Yeah. So Disco Fibers, the way that I kind of explain to everyone is that we are a secondhand yarn and fiber thrift shop. I'm I'm based online for the most part and currently looking for retail space. Um, (laughs) But the, the concept behind it is that we have generational wealth with our craft supplies, with our yarn with our fabric with everything like that and we tend to carry that with us from place that we move to move to move and then we tend to pass that down from generations to generations but what do you do if you don't have a place to give that to somewhere and so with the idea of disco fibers is that we created a space where it's a place where all of your worldly goods can kind of land for a little bit before we're able to find it a new home and you can donate with feeling guilt-free about it yeah, I always feel sad for yarn at like Goodwill because it's usually just like big bags of mixes of different yarns. And you can't really tell what's in it, and it always yeah. looks like it's been sitting there forever. And yeah, it kind of bumps me out. Yeah, and that kind of leads into exactly you know you asked the question of like how this kind of gets started. It kind of <clears throat> it kind of came out of a need for myself. I was let go from my position. Um, from my last company, like May of 2022, because my position was downsized because we had lost funding and everything. And I just kind of taken the past year off to kind of like 
recalculate what I want to do. And, and part of that time was giving myself time to be more creative. I was always a creative person growing up, but I never, once I became an adult, I just kind of like abandoned that and was like, oh, I'm not an artist. I'm just a crafty person. So I'm, you know, I don't need to give myself time. I don't need to put money into that. I don't need, you know, I'm not going to get anything out of that. So I'm not going to do it. But now that I'm older and I realize spending time by myself, and spending time on things that are valuable to me is what's valuable. And so, mm-hmm. you know, part of this time this past year was giving my time to myself to be able to to be able to get, dedicate myself to crochet again. And I'm I've always been a secondhand person, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I almost we almost decided to call Disco Fibers Trash Panda Fibers because <laughs> I just oh, I've I just it. have always been <laughs> You know, I want to get things secondhand. I want to get it at a a good rate. I I never want to pay full price. And so when I started crocheting again recently, I really started looking at places like Goodwill and the different secondhand stores here in Portland. And while some of them did have fiber content, they didn't usually have any enough of one content to make a, you know, any, you know, one similarity in order to make complete a project or, you know, they just didn't have the, the, width or the depth in selection. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I decided to do with Disco Fibers is really be able to give a place where I can really give that dedication just to fiber. Yeah, that's great. So if you if some if a person has too much yarn, I would never have too much yarn, but if someone has too much yarn (laughs) and they know that if they if they give it to you that you'll kind of get it into the right hands of the right people who are gonna use it and make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Is that where most of your donations come from? So when I first started, I just basically I just went, I created little flyers <laughs> on, in Windows Word and um, didn't worry about making them too fancy. And I just went out and kind of introduced myself to all the local yarn shops. And from there, I just, you know, kind of went in and said, hey, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And I really didn't know what their reaction was going to be because going into it, I was really nervous because you know, I was doing this as a consumer, like as a consumer, mm-hmm. there was a need for secondhand yarn to have that, be able to have that variety and be able to have that readily accessible. But I didn't know about the need on the other side to have a place where people can de stash to. And so going into a lot of these local yarn shops, I was really nervous that they're going to be like, you want free yarn? Get out. Like I, was ready, like, I was, like, I was ready to just be kicked out of every shop I went into. And I was just so caught off guard by, I would go into a shop and people would be like, yes, absolutely. Give me your flyers. Like before I could even finish talking, like they would start asking me more questions and, you know, give me your website and give me your information. And, you know, I have stuff in the back I can give you right now. And some of these shops have just been my biggest advocates and they are constantly like, Hey, we're going to do an event on this day. Can you come over? Um, can you come over? And we just had a big drop off. Can you come and pick up on, on this day for us? And it, it really has been so satisfying. And I think that has been the most encouraging part is everyone in the shops who has been so absolutely positive to work with. And I think that has been my biggest roadblock that has been eliminated for me was a lot of doubt, self-doubt going into this. Cause I was just like, I just don't know if this is going to be a thing. And everyone just being so happy and so positive. Like for example, when I went to, went to the knit picks, uh, <laughs> knit in public day with you guys. And I was so nervous to be there, especially in a, in a, in a female dominated area. I'm really sensitive about, you know, being a male in that space. So I was, I was there for about maybe 30 seconds, kind of looked around and I was like, I'm just going to get out of here. I don't want to be in any, anybody else's space. And, and Stacy caught me and was like, Zeb, disco virus, come here. And like, <laughs> you were just so friendly and everyone else, like everyone at nitpicks is so incredibly friendly. Like I have just gone on and on and on. How about all of you were so great and so nice over there. <laughs> and that really has been so much full of the community. Like everywhere I go, everyone was so nice and so inviting because we all know people who need to de-stash for one reason or another, whether they're moving or they have a store that's closing or, you know, they're helping, helping you know, settle an estate, whatever it is, we always have, you know, a reason to every so often just de-stash and spring clean and get rid of stuff and knowing that where we're sending it is going to be to, you know, a good, awesome place where other people are going to be able to enjoy it. And you're not going to, 
feel guilty about donating. Like I'm, I'm very big about like, I don't, you know, when I go to spring clean my own stuff, like I don't want to go through and waste my time selling it. I just want to donate it somewhere that I know is going to be able to, you know, make good use of it. And, uh, so to be able to be the opposite side of that is just has been such an amazing journey with everyone. Yeah, it was funny because when I saw you, I, I saw you through your Instagram first and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, what's this? And then I, I remember sending a message to Lee and I'm like, Lee, check this out. It's a thrift yarn store. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I we like recognized you. followed you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then that's why we... Um, when you showed up at the Knit in Public Day, we were so excited to mm-hmm. to meet you. And I'm glad we've gotten to be able to have you in the office and, like, give you some of our D-Stash stuff, too. Because yeah. we do, all of us, I mean, all of us at Knit Picks and We Crochet have a lot of yarn that we love, but we don't necessarily feel like we're going to use it. So yeah. we may as well make it, have it go to someplace where someone else can love it and make something with it. So yeah. it's very common that when I go into one of the, one of these local yarn stores, cause I never go in, like I never let them know ahead of time. I just kind of pop in, just drop off flyers. Cause otherwise I lose my nerve. And so I just go in and I'm like, hi, this is who I am. Blah, blah, blah. Give them my flyers. And usually the same day or the next day, I usually get a call from that shop. They're like, okay, all the employees got together and we have a bunch of stuff to give you guys. <laughs> so, so it, it almost <laughs> happens like at every store I go to. So that, that again has just been a, a huge encouraging, like, y- yes sign that I know that I'm on the right path with all this. So, <laughs> no, that's amazing. And then, I mean, and then, you know, you put it up on, on your website and you have like great deals and, you know, gently used yarn or gently loved yarn. And mm-hmm. I think it's fantastic. And then we were talking when you were in office, you were doing whatnot. Can you explain what that is? Yeah. Thanks so much. I had never heard that. of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, whatnot is the technical, the technical aspect of it is that it's an online selling platform. And the way that I describe it is if you've ever wanted to host your own QVC show, (laughs) this is the app for you. Uh, You know, as like, I'm an only child and like we grew up in the country. So there wasn't a lot of other kids to play with. And like being a QVC host was like my (laughs) idea of fame. And so I like as a little kid, like loved pretending to be a QVC host. And so like now actually kind of like get to do something like this. It's just like a natural progression for me. Um, Especially if so like I've always, I've been in sales for like the past 20 years. So this is even better. But what it is, is uh, you basically host a little show. I have my I have my video camera up, and I recently got um, you know installed a background and everything like that. But you can either do buy it now options, just like you would on any other website that you can always have listed twenty four seven in your shop, or you can host live events and do auctions and giveaways, which is what I normally do. And so I actually, as of right now, I'm doing three shows a week: Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern. And so you can come in and I show different yarns and um, we auction them off. And I, you know, different days are different price points. So like Monday, we started like $5 and Wednesday's 10 and and Friday's 15. And then once a month, we're going to do like, like a treasure chest show or something like that, where everything's like $20 and up to start, Um, Mm -hmm. which I was kind of, I was kind of hesitant about, but my customers on there were like, no, 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 bring us your best stuff. Like they don't care about like the dollar yarn, two dollar yarn. Like they want like the really, really nice stuff. And so it's actually been a nice place to be able to show off some of these like specialty yarns that we get donated, which is really awesome. So in short, like whatnot basically is just a little show where I get to show you different products one by one and we auction them off. I usually have any between, you know, 20 to 40 people like in my live views and it just increases every week. And it's so much fun. Like the customers that I have are regulars. They come all the time and they get to know each other and they actually talk to each other in the comments and they (laughs) ask about, they're like, Oh, you were working on this shawl. Like, how are you doing on it? And Oh, you broke your leg. Like, how's your leg doing? (laughs) And like they actually, it becomes like, it becomes like a fun community beyond just like a seller buyer relationship. It's a full community and it's, um, 
it's really fun. It's still, it's just a couple of years old. And especially within the arts and handmade, they're looking for new sellers. Um, mm-hmm. It's not one of their biggest categories right now. They're more bigger on like trading cards and sports memorabilia and like fun co pops. It's more of those collectibles mm-hmm. types of things. Mm-hmm. really what drives whatnot as an app. But there is the arts and handmade section. And, you know, I personally, it's it's been a game changer for me. I got on it because of some some other sellers who were also secondhand um, fiber people. And I reluctantly got on there and I was like, sure, like I'll get on here, I'll do this. And immediately, like just to be able to have that connection with your customers and be able to have that interaction, it was such a game changer. It's so much different than me just posting it to my website, discofibers.com, and <laughs> just waiting for orders to come in. It's this way I actually get to interact with people and they and I get that feedback of, oh, you guys are wanting more chunky yarns, you guys are wanting more fingering weights for this, or you want, you know, I can immediately get that feedback. By the way, tweeds, I've been getting a lot of tweed requests right now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool <laughs> tweed fall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it really, it really has become a fun, um, fun environment. So if anybody wants to be a seller, check it out. If anybody just wants to be a buyer, feel free to go and check it out. Um, I've become such a little like lighthouse for them. I, I love the whatnot <laughs> app. So if anybody has any questions, they can always reach out to me. That's amazing. Because I had never heard of that. And you brought that up when we were talking at the office. And I'm like, that is fascinating. And that is a wonderful way to, to sell to, you know, especially in this day and age when people buy so much on the internet that you don't have that personal connection with people. So yeah. having something like that um, is amazing. I, yeah. I really think that's amazing. And I love that you have like a little community around that. And oh, yeah. I think that's great. Cause I've been looking at like Twitch, you know, p- knitters on Twitch. Cause that's a very small niche yeah. knitters and crocheters on Twitch and they don't have a big following, but I do know they have a very loyal following and it sounds yeah. very similar to whatnot. So yeah. That's awesome. So what do you have planned for the future of Disco Fibers? Oof. Okay, so I... Everything. Everything. (laughs) Um, I just got um, someone volunteering to be my first volunteer. They just randomly reached out to me and were like, "Uh, do you need a volunteer by chance? I was like, yes. Yes, I do. So I'm actually think I'm going to be scheduling, I think, like a volunteer day. I'm going to have a couple people come over and kind of help me with some of the stuff that just kind of takes up a lot (laughs) of my time. (laughs) That if they could just help me knock out... (laughs) The fact that you've been doing it on your own for so long is amazing. <laughs> Out of your house, when you were telling me that, I'm just like, oh, honey, that's a lot of yarn to bring to your house. Yeah, don't tell my landlord. But yeah, I'm just working out of my <laughs> home right now. So it's uh, I, that's why I always have boxes behind me. I don't know if you guys can see right now, but uh, <laughs> I always have boxes behind me. Um, it's, you know, but I get to stay home and I get to work with my dogs. So, you know, who are my girls and my love of my life so it's <laughs> it's so much fun um yeah i i sometimes i don't realize how much i'm doing until you know i'm t- like i was out the other night with a friend we were catching up and i was kind of sharing everything with him and i was like oh yeah i'm gonna go do the podcast on thursday and he goes what podcast what are you talking about and i was like i was like did i talk to you about nitpicks and he was like no and i was like oh and so like be able to go through and like recount some of these things that I'm doing that I just take for granted because now I'm just doing it um, mm-hmm. for someone to, you know, come back and call me out and be like, no dude, like you're doing all this stuff and you know, <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. So, um, yeah. So, so definitely volunteers are my, my next step. I'm trying to streamline the website a little bit more because I've been focusing so much on my whatnot sales. Um, Cause I do, when I do those shows, they're about two hours long. Um, I try to make them an hour, but then I just talk too much as, you know, (laughs) surprise, surprise. And so my shows always end up being like two hours long. Uh, and then I have to pack everything. And and so that's why that's been taking a lot of my energy. I'm trying to figure out a way to like streamline that and, uh, be able to focus more on the website as well. And then I want to be able to get into more events right now in like, there's a couple of knitting guilds here in the Portland area, but there's no crochet guilds in all of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would love to. That's start fascinating cr- to me too. I would have th- thought there would be. Yeah, the closest one is up in I want to say Bellingham, but that may be too far away. But the closest one is up in up in Washington somewhere. But I personally would love to be able to start like a a queer centric, just fiber arts 
guild, whether it's crochet or knitting, it doesn't need to be separated because we can all learn from one another. Mm -hmm. And I, I think being able to create that because I know so many, so many queer members here that knit and crochet, but we all kind of do it separately and there's not a lot of crossover. And so like when we do meet each other at events, it's like, Oh, Hey, (laughs) we're here. too, (laughs) You know, Um, especially like, you know, like there's just not a lot of men within the knitting and crochet community as it is. So when we, when we see each other, we're like, (laughs) (laughs) there's Uh, the unicorn. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. Um, On October. Oh, day is it going to be it's the it's going to be the october meeting for the fort vancouver knitting guild i'll be their speaker there that month so and that's going to be in person so if anybody wants to come and meet in person feel free to come uh to that meeting that day and i'm trying to think what else we have set up i'm trying to figure out contests we kind of talked about this before but i want to come up with like maybe like an amigurumi contest or create your create your own granny scare uh, square contest, something along that lines. I don't know, but I want to, I want to do something like that to get more community involvement. And then of course, hopefully a retail space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to do all this stuff. Yeah, totally. I can't even, like I said, when you told me that you just worked in your, in your home, that was just, <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Probably as much yarn as as we have laying around our house. Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about how much yarn you have piled up in boxes in your house, but we're wondering, <laughs> um, like, how, once it comes in, what do you do with it? Like, what's the process of like you get a big box of yarn? What happens next? Great question. Because I receive it through so many different avenues whether it be through you know it's been sitting in someone's closet or you know it's been in the back of a store somewhere or wherever um whenever it comes in i kind of separate it into a couple different categories so first i go with you know does it have a label and does it look like it's a a full ball or full skein or a full hank or whatever if it's labeled i kind of separate that and i set it to the side and if it doesn't have a label that gets go um into its own box or to its own side and with the stuff that's not that doesn't have a label that I can't 100% for sure say it's this fiber, it's that thing. And I know that there are different tests that I can go through, but I am one person. And that is, <laughs> that's where I put my, my little stop on myself is where um, I know if I were to go through and try to sort all of those unlabeled items by fiber type and by, you know, whatever it would that would be the end of me for sure um <laughs> yeah. so i just Reps per, per inch and so exactly, like, <laughs> exactly. Each one around a right yeah. so <laughs> with that stuff i'm organizing it by color and it's gonna uh, it's eventually gonna turn into mystery bags that we're gonna do through a website and eventually once we have a physical location then that will be done that will be sold by weight and then anything that does have a label with it. I organize that as best I can. I try to find any matches. Like I was going through my Madeline Tosh last night and didn't realize I had so many matches of the same one. For example, when I received uh, those last boxes from Nitpick, I went through, pulled everything that had a label on it, tried to organize everything that was like by the same. So like all the, um, all the strolls together, all the Andes together and, you know, as best I could. And then if I didn't have same colors, I at least try to put like colorways that would go well together. And I'll tell you the first night, so the Friday night after I met with you guys, I went through anything that was labeled with nitpicks. I was able to get organized and we sold all of it oh. in two hours or less. Wow. So it, <laughs> when I tell you customers like your nitpicks, when they like the product, they really, <laughs> really like it. So it's very quickly to be able to get out and get to somebody else so that then they can use it and they can, you know, use it for themselves or use it for a business. And that's been kind of the nice thing is being able to partner with some of the local businesses here, some of the some of the makers here in Portland, I'm able to help supply them as well mm-hmm. so they have reduced cost and that was the whole idea behind this was to be able to ultimately help makers and artists here in portland so being able to do all that reduce for them has has been just a dream <laughs> that's awesome hey and i'll jump in here as uh from nitpicks uh the yarn that we gave you um it was mostly or it was all kind of stuff that we couldn't sell you know we we don't 
ship yarn out of our office, obviously. It comes from the right. warehouse. And so if anything is in our office, we can't really sell anyway. And stuff that ends up in our free bins is um, often like extra samples that we get from when we have um, color development done and we get extra dye colors that we end up not choosing or we just get extra samples and kind of everyone in the office takes what they want but we can't take it all <laughs> we just can't and it, a lot of it is out. a lot of it is leftovers too like we yeah. needed yeah. like only like mm-hmm. 50 yards from this 200 heart or like you know this yeah ball. yeah we'll yeah. get we'll swatch up all the colors so the swatches come out of each ball so they're partial balls also sometimes people in the office will bring in their own stash yeah to de-stash <laughs> i was about to say yeah <laughs> some so of the stuff there, there was, was <laughs> de-stash <laughs> stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. so this is all stuff that it needed a home so it it had the option of going home with anyone in the office we didn't want it so we were really happy to like have a place to give it a home get it out there in the world get it out of the office. i'm glad it's a new home now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get so. it to new homes. <laughs> totally. I I think the way that I always kind of describe it is that it's it's product that may not be sellable for whatever reason, but it still has mm-hmm. value. It mm-hmm, may totally. not be, you know, because I know especially like with you know customers today in the U.S. Like we want perfection when we see a product, right? So <laughs> we know, uh, you know, we know often that if something gets slightly damaged, it no longer has value to the company or we can't sell it like this or whatever. And I'm, and I'm speaking from, you know, working in retail forever and knowing the ridiculous amounts of waste that we have in retail that are, mm-hmm. that there are plenty of things that retail establishments will destroy product rather than giving mm-hmm. away as it's secondhand. And that just blows mm-hmm. my mind when That's something is insane. already created, why destroy it? when we can simply give it on to, to other people who can use it. Also, when you were talking all about, like, you know, selling our yarn and other yarns and sorting it and Madeline Tosh and all that, like, it made me curious how you um, decide your pricing. I was wondering if it's, like, by fiber content or by brand or, like, do you look up retail prices and go off of that? That's a great question. So when I originally started on the website, I was like, okay, I'm just going to I'm going to price this with my heart. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I would go through and try to price things in a in a way that I felt was fair. Like if I look at something, how much would I pay for this? You know, and and without without knowing the retail price, how much would I pay for this? But then after a while it was I posted this before, but now I don't remember what price I posted it and what do I need to do? So I I did have to start going online and looking up original retail prices for all of these different yarns. And so I have a massive spreadsheet with hundreds of brands in there that I've been researching for these, you know, past months and, and pulling all that. And it's actually been um, a lot of fun to be able to go back and research some of these brands. Cause I get donations of companies that are no longer exist anymore. And so to be able to go back and, be like, oh, Cloudborn, they had really good product. Or, you know, Knit Crate worked with really great designers. And, you know, to be able to learn about, you know, what was good in the past helps me understand what are people looking for now. Um, and so as far as pricing goes, I'll be very honest. I'm straight across the board. I the the I have a formula within my spreadsheet, so it's straight across the board for everyone. So it's 40, uh, 45% of the original price. So 55% off of the original price. And then every additional item after that or within that package, like let's say I'm doing like a five pack or something, even goes down a little bit more even after that. So I want to be so far under that it's a traditional secondhand price, but it still shows value and can still help maintain the business at the same time. Because, you know, there's in that Gemini where I'm like, okay, do I want to mm-hmm. price it so low that I'm just giving everything away for free because I'm totally that type of person. Let me just gift everything <laughs> if I can. But at the same time, I need to make money to be able to to be self-sufficient and, and you know, let it allow it to run itself. So, um, mm-hmm. I, and then the feedback I've received from my customers is that my price point is is perfection for, for, what, they, for what they're receiving. Um, awesome. No one has come at me and told me that it's too high um i have i've been told that i could even raise it if i want to and i might do that down the later down the road but i'm not that type of person so i probably won't i feel like um knowing about you is great for anyone at least in this country do you ship beyond this country at all not at this point um honestly setting up shipping is uh not my forte and I, I t- yeah it was a I would little imagine it's gotten more me. expensive lately yeah yeah so um i'm 
I'm actually excited. Like, I just got a printer, a label printer. So, like, that's my first step in shipping advancement. So, international shipping will come down the road. (laughs) So, if you're in the U.S., definitely (laughs) check it out for shopping purposes. I would imagine if you're anywhere outside the Portland metro area, probably it isn't realistic to donate yarn to you because... Paying for shipping to get it to you is probably you would be outside surprised. of most people's. Some people oh, have contacted okay. me and they're just so happy to have a place to send it that they don't mind paying that shipping fee. Like okay. I had someone well. I had someone contact me, they're from Colorado, and they were really like, I'm just so happy to have a place like it was a hand like handmade card. It was gorgeous. <laughs> and they're like, I'm just so happy to have a place where this can land. My children are so happy that they don't have to take this. They've told me they do not (laughs) want it. Um, So with secondhand, should you do local? Absolutely 100% of the time if you can. But if you want to send it to me, I'll take it. (laughs) I've actually been to a craft thrift store in Colorado, but it could have been a totally different (laughs) part of Colorado. Um, I kind of wanted to speak to anyone outside of the Portland metro area for like, oh, this is interesting to you, but you don't want to ship. Um, There are craft thrift stores that exist. And if you're in a city especially, definitely look into that in your region. That that could exist and be a good place to give yarn and also buy yarn. Also, there's um, somewhere that I have given away free yarn before is the um, it happens in Portland every month in the summer the really really free market and mm-hmm. that's it's a thing it's not just in Portland if you search really really free market is is a thing in other cities and it's the reason it's called that is because like free market is like a capitalism term you know the, mm-hmm. the free market <laughs> but really really free market no it's actually really really free yeah. <laughs> and what it is it's like a like a swap meet or flea market or something but everything is literally free so you're oh, not yeah, allowed to sell you're not allowed to barter even you're not allowed to go around and trade you just everything you put out you have to give away for free and then yeah. anything anyone has you take it for free so that's great because you don't have to worry about asking someone like how much they want or if it's okay to take it or you just put it out and people just take it so that's a great way to um give away anything including yarn i have given away yarn there before yeah that's that's something to look into there's tons of creative use um centers all across the u.s so like uh like here Mm -hmm. in portland we have rebuild it and scrap there's a Mm -hmm. website and i cannot remember off the top of my head i'll have to i'll have to link it on my page but there is there is a there's a website where it has all of the reuse centers in the nice. U.S. And it actually lists it as, uh, you know, western half of the United States or the eastern half. So that way you're shopping within your market. So, awesome. Um, well, another- I'll definitely find that or ask you for that link and put that in the show notes because that Perfect. sounds awesome. Perfect. Oh, and I would totally be remiss. Like, part of part of the way that this all came to ha- um, came to fruition was by working with Swanson's Fabric in Massachusetts. Catherine Swanson is the owner over there. And that is a secondhand fabric store. And they just recently started carrying yarn. And that kind of what made me go, oh, I could do that. Because originally I wanted to do secondhand fabric too. But I was like, I don't have the space for that. When (laughs) when she started doing yarn, I was like, oh, I can do yarn. And so I reached out to her and I was like, hey, I have this idea. And she has been such a blessing to really just really be a friend and be a mentor through this through this whole process. So I have to give a huge shout out to Catherine. She's been absolutely amazing over at Swanson's Fabric. Awesome. Yeah, and if you're in Portland, definitely check out Scrap too because Scrap oh, is yeah. one of my favorite stores. <laughs> yeah. And oh, it's yeah. not, uh, yarn isn't like the main thing that they do. So right. there's not a lot of crossover with you, but I've gotten tons of fabric there and like screen screen printing supplies and like picture frames and yep. paper. Buttons. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love scrap too. <laughs> oh yeah. So good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I think we're about done here, but let's share with our listeners some of your links. I know you put, you said discofibers.com. <laughs> Yep. So where else can people find you on the, the web? Yeah, so discofibers.com. And if you go there, you can actually sign up for my newsletter, which I rarely do, but I'm going to start doing it on a weekly basis, I promise. <laughs> um, you can also find me on Instagram. I'm very active. That's probably where I'm most active at as far as social media goes. And that's just at discofibers. I'm on Facebook, but I don't really do that much on there. I've started my YouTube channel at Disco Fibers. But I haven't uh, recorded anything yet, but I'm working with a couple of other creators 
or I'll need to make videos. So mm -hmm. expect those soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then, of course, on the WhatNot app, I'm also uh, at Disco Fibers. Cool. And then on your website, you have information on donations yes. and can shop and all of that good stuff. Absolutely. And, and you, cute and cute and pictures of your doggies. Oh, yes. I saw them. <laughs> <laughs> My two little employees I, that are not very helpful. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Zeb. And we'll, we'll make sure to put all these links in the show notes. So yes. check it out. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. This podcast was originally created by Kelly Petkin. It is produced and hosted by me, Stacey Winklefleck, and Lee Meredith. Produced by Andy Satterland with additional production and editing by Chase Ryan. Extra special thanks for Zeb Walter for joining us today. We recorded this episode in the Pacific Northwest, where we're planning out our fall projects. From everyone here at Nitpicks, thank you for joining us. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the individual participants. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions or views of the Cross Group LLC or Premier Needle Arts. All the yarn, tools, and patterns mentioned in this episode, along with all the inspiration a knitter could need, can be found on our website at nitpicks.com. If you'd like to be on our podcast, leave us a voicemail. We'll be checking it regularly and using your calls in later episodes. To leave a voicemail, call 360-334-4847 and record your message. You can also record a voice memo on your phone and email us the audio file at podcast at nitpicks.com. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube at Nitpicks. Rate and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. Until next time, happy crafting. Happy crafting.